In our previous tutorial, we learnt about the conditional probability formula, which tells us the probability of an event A occurring given an event B has occurred, and we saw that A is known as the event, whose probability we're trying to find, and B is known as the hypothesis, which is the event that has already occurred, or that we're assuming has occurred. We also saw the multiplicative property formula, which was obtained by rearranging the formula at the top here, and gives us the probability of event A and B occurring. As a quick reminder, we're dealing with conditional probabilities, in other words, probabilities in which the occurrence of one event, typically called B, has an impact on the probability of an event A occurring. Now what we learn about here is the total probability formula. And here's the idea. Let's say we want to calculate the probability of event A occurring, but we have absolutely no idea whether or not the hypothesis B has occurred. In other words, the scenario is we want the probability of event A, and we don't know whether or not event B has occurred. So I'll just write don't know if B occurred. Now the fact that we don't know whether or not the event B, or the hypothesis, has occurred means that we can't simply use the conditional probability formula. Instead, we use the total probability formula. And here's the idea. Let me start by drawing a typical Venn diagram, and I'll call that the universal set, capital U, in which we have two sets, A and B. Looking at this Venn diagram, we can see that there are two ways in which event A can occur. Either the event A occurs with event B, in other words, event A and B occurs, which corresponds to the region that I'm coloring in green right now. So that's the event A and B. Or the event A and not B occurs, which corresponds to the region I'm coloring in yellow right now. And that's the event A and not B. And since these two events are mutually exclusive, meaning they can't occur simultaneously, in other words, it's one or the other, but not both, the probability of event A occurring is equal to the sum of the probabilities of each of these two events occurring. In other words, the probability of A is equal to the probability of A and B plus the probability of A and not B. And in fact, that's the total probability formula. But most of the time, we won't be given the probability of A and B, nor will we be given the probability of A and not B. Indeed, it's more than likely that we'll be given the probability of A occurring given B has occurred, as well as the probability of A occurring given B hasn't occurred, as well as the probability of B occurring which in turn allows us to find the probability of B not occurring. Indeed, that's equal to the complement of the probability of B. Since this is the information we'll usually be given in a question, we combine this formula that I just boxed in red with the multiplicative property formula. And here's how that works. Combining these two formula, we can go ahead and state that the probability of event A occurring is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B plus the probability of A given B hasn't occurred times the probability of B not occurring. And I'll go ahead and box that. That is the total probability formula that we'll see most of the time. And in fact, I'll go ahead and write total probability formula. Many people prefer working with tree diagrams rather than Venn diagrams and the formula here. And if that's the case, you can obtain the same result as the one we just did here as follows. For the event A to occur, we have to consider the possibility that either the hypothesis B occurred, so either B occurred, or it didn't occur. So I'll just write B apostrophe. We carry on with the tree diagram. If B occurred, then either A occurred, so I'll just write A here, or A didn't occur. And in a similar way, if the event B didn't occur, then following that, either A occurs or it doesn't occur. So I'll just add that to the tree diagram, A and not A. Now on the branches of this tree diagram, we need to write each of the corresponding probabilities. So on the bottom branches, we'll have probability of B and probability of B not occurring. And on the top branch here, we'll have the probability of A given B has occurred 
we'll then have the probability of A not occurring, given B has occurred. And carrying on, we have the probability of A occurring, given B hasn't occurred. And finally, the probability of A not occurring, given B hasn't occurred. And looking at this tree diagram, we quickly see that there are two ways in which event A can occur. Either B occurs, followed by A. Alternatively, event B doesn't occur, followed by event A occurring. And the probabilities of these two events, so those are B and A, and not B and A, are obtained by multiplying the probabilities we see along each of the two respective paths. So at the top here, that's probability of A given B times the probability of B. And the yellow path here, we have the probability of A given B hasn't occurred times the probability of B not occurring. And just like for any other tree diagram, the total probability is the sum of these two probabilities. And you can go ahead and check, but adding these two probabilities together leads us to exactly the same formula that we have boxed here. All right, we now know the total probability formula. We've derived it using both a Venn diagram and a tree diagram. So what we need to do now is get our hands dirty and work through an example and see how to use it. And we do that in the next tutorial. So let's go ahead and watch it.